Hello, and welcome to this first in a series of six films about the standard level kinetics topic from the IB Diploma Chemistry course. This one deals with rates of reaction, as you can see, hopefully, and hopefully by the end of this film, you will understand not only what we mean by a rate of reaction, but what units we might use to measure it, and by looking at some graphs of experimental data, we'll uh, consider what we mean by three different kinds of rate, and they are the average rate, an instantaneous rate, and the initial rate of a chemical reaction. Okay, so first of all, just to introduce the topic of kinetics briefly, okay, it's all about how fast chemical reactions happen, and I suppose if you're measuring how fast anything happens, like how fast a car is moving, then what you're doing is you're measuring a change in something and dividing that by the amount of time taken for that change to occur. So a moving car, the change is in the distance it travels, so perhaps kilometers, and then dividing that by the time, which might be hours, so you end up with kilometers per hour. As we'll see now, when we measure the rate of a chemical reaction, the units are similar, but different to those of speed of moving objects. Okay, so if we have a look at this chemical reaction here, uh, we can see that all three substances in this equation are dissolved in water, and there's a reason for that, and that is because usually the units of rate are given as a change in the concentration of something, so all these things are in solution here, divided by the time taken to make that change. So, for example, if I chose this first product, B, I could say that the rate of this chemical reaction could be expressed as the change in the concentration of B, so that's what square brackets B means, concentration of B, divided by the time taken to make that change. Okay, it's usually a positive quantity, just like any other speed. Okay, um, but if we look here, I could also express it in terms of C, okay, but because the concentration of C will change twice as fast as the concentration of B, okay, then because there's a 2 to 1 mole ratio here, then I could say that the, con the change in the concentration of B divided by the change in time is the same as a half of the change in the concentration of C divided by the change in time. And regardless of which formula I use to express this rate, I'll see that I'm dividing a change in concentration, so that's moles per dm cubed, because concentrations are measured in moles per dm cubed, dividing that by a time, and most often that will be in seconds, so per second, or divided by seconds, so moles per dm cubed per second are the most common units that we'll see for rate. Okay. Now as I've said, this is normally a positive quantity, like a speed, Okay. and if we look at this uh, reaction here, we've got one mole of B being formed from one mole of A. So in other words, the concentration of A will change by the same amount as the concentration of B, but the concentration of B is going up. It's a positive quantity, or the change in the concentration of B is a positive quantity. The change in the concentration of A will be a negative quantity, because it's being used up. So I could also say that this rate is m minus the change in the concentration of A divided by the change in time. Okay, but remember the concentration of A has fallen, so this is a negative number. So if I take the negative of a negative number, I'll end up with the same number as this. Okay, and again it will have those same units of moles per dm cubed per second. Now say it's usually measured in moles per dm cubed per second. That's because we don't always have things that are in solution. So if we look at the products here again, I could see that. C is in solution, so I could measure this rate in terms of its concentration, but here B is a gas. So um, maybe I could measure the change in the amount of B being formed. I could measure, maybe the, measure the volume of this gas that has formed, in which case I'd be finding a rate in centimetres cubed per second if I was measuring the volume of B in centimetres cubed. But I wouldn't measure a concentration anymore because B isn't dissolving. Okay. If I look at the reactants here, a is a solid. I can't measure the concentration of a solid because their concentration is constant. I can't really measure the volume of a solid without difficulty, but we often measure the um, amount of solid in grams. Okay, So I could measure a rate in grams per second as well, or even grams per minute or grams per hour or whatever time unit I chose. But this is just to illustrate the fact that the amount of a substance doesn't have to be expressed as a concentration. Okay. Um, looking at some concentration time graphs now, and in actual fact this graph isn't strictly speaking a concentration time graph, but it's quite a nice 
um, sort of uh, graphical or, and pictorial representation of what's going on in a chemical reaction where um, we're starting with a reactant A and there's lots of it in this beaker and gradually it's turning into B so the amount of purple particles is falling you can see this line here showing that gradual fall in the number of molecules of A and that's accompanied by a gradual rise in the amount of molecules of B and I suppose because the gradients of these lines are the same um, this shows us that there is one particle of B formed for every particle of A but really I just wanted to have a look at this graph to show you that as the concentration or the amount of one of the reactants falls then the amount of the products will gradually increase and they're kind of mirror images of each other because one is a positive one's a negative quantity okay so if we now move on and have a look at some actual concentration time graphs so that is graphs with concentration on one axis and time on the other okay here we've got a very similar looking graph and showing the product gradually increasing in concentration and the reactant gradually falling in concentration okay there's not really a great deal different between this graph and the last one except for as I say we've got concentration on this axis instead of a number of molecules okay because we can't normally count a number of molecules but we can measure a concentration now if we start thinking about different kinds of rates and how we might get them from our graph then uh, we'll need to consider three different kinds of rate okay now the average rate is how fast things were happening on average between when the reaction started and when it finished and the way we'd calculate this would be to find the overall change in the amount of product and divide it by the amount of time taken for that change to take place so here is my overall change in the concentration of my product and here is the time taken for that to take place okay so it's a simple rise over run calculation if this was a straight line but it's not it's a curve but nonetheless we can calculate an average rate because you can see the rate is constantly changing here right because if the rate is given in moles per dm cubed per second or on this graph moles per litre per second but we know that a litre is the same as a dm cubed okay then we can see that this is simply y over x which is the gradient of a line and the gradient of this particular line is changing all the time because it's a curve but nonetheless we can find the average gradient by finding the overall change in concentration and dividing by the time taken if however we wanted to find an instantaneous rate then what we would need to do here is to find the rate at any particular instant in time so for example I might be asked to find the instantaneous rate after 150 seconds and to do that I need to now draw a tan that's not a very straight looking tangent but it's supposed to be a straight line and it's supposed to be a tangent to this curve at 150 seconds okay I could do the same thing um, with the reactant here I could draw a tangent to here but remember because this is falling I'd have to put a minus sign right because the rate is a positive quantity but now we're just finding the rise over run of these gradients so for example I can find that rise over that run or the, in other words the gradient of my tangent now that's two rates discussed but by far the most commonly used rate measurement is the initial rate and that's the rate at the very beginning of an experiment because at the beginning of an experiment we know how much stuff is there because we put it there so in other words we can investigate how the rate changes based on some variables that we might input but we only really know the values of those variables at the start of an experiment so to find the initial rate this is just like an instantaneous rate really except that we're doing it at time zero okay now if you were to measure what the rate was after zero seconds you could argue well there was no rate because the reaction hasn't started yet because we haven't started you know time hasn't started going yet so to speak okay but just like we can measure the instantaneous rate at any point of the curve we can do it at zero seconds as well and then it's just once again a matter of finding this y over x or the gradient of this tangent okay so there we are we've discussed three different kinds of rate that we might measure and the units that we might measure them in okay we're going to move on to some um, other details of the kinetics topic now um, but as usual if you've got any 
uh, questions or comments that you'd like to make, then please feel free to come and see me, or ideally put some comments on YouTube so that other people can benefit from them too.